It's time to take on another easy to do 3D printed project, and it even tells the time. A couple of months ago, we did a project where we built a mini Wi Fi monitor that will give you Octoprint updates on your print status. That was a project by David Payne. Well, David's got another project for this LED marquee scroller. It'll give you Octoprint updates, the time, the weather, the news, and it'll even give you some advice if you need it. So today we're going to walk through all the steps to get one of these built. It's pretty cheap to build and it's pretty easy to do. So let's start by checking out the Instructable. So here's the Instructable created by David or Chrome or Chromer, you might see him around YouTube, and it has pretty much everything you need except a step-by-step -step walkthrough. And that's what I plan on doing today. It has a short video you can check out on how it works, it's got the wiring diagrams you'll need, and all the links to the libraries and things you'll need to get it configured. All the links for the project will be in the description below, so let's not waste any more time and let's jump in and see what we need to get this thing built. And here are the only electronics that you will need for this build. We have a Wemos D1 Mini, just like the one we use in the print monitor project, and an LED dot matrix panel. It even came with some jumper wires that we can use to hook it up to the Mini. Links to these items in the description. So you could solder some header pins on the Mini and use these connectors, but I don't think it's going to fit in the case that David has designed. So I'm just going to cut one side of the connectors off and solder them and use the other side of the connectors for the LED panel. And here's the only two printed parts you'll need. This is the case that David has created for this project. This is the base, and then this is the lid. This is where your Wemos module slides into. You might want to consider printing this in a light color. This is Chuck Hellebuck's green. It is pretty light, but the LEDs are going to have to shine through this plate. It'll still work, but it might be a little dim if you use a darker color. Now we'll get everything soldered up. We're going to work from the back of the board, and we're going to go from the top down. We've got VCC, ground, DIN, CS, and clock pin. I'm going to use red, brown, orange, yellow, and green in that order. The Wemos board is going to have to be mounted with the Wi-Fi card to the outside, or it won't fit. So we're going to have to solder with the wires going in. So the top pin, the red VCC wire, is going to go on the Wemos board in the 5-volt pin right there. Next one down, that's the ground pin. We're using the brown wire. It'll go on the Wemos board right next to that 5-volt pin right there. Next one down is the orange pin. That's the DIN pin. And that's going to go to the D7 pin, which is right there. Next, we have the CS pin. That's on the yellow wire. That one's going to go to D6, which is right here. Last but not least, the bottom pin, the clock pin, it's on the green wire. And that's going to go to D5, right there. I cleaned up the connections a little bit, but your wiring is complete. Now let's plug it in USB to the computer, power it up, and get some code on it. Now we head back to the Instructables that David has created. Now usually the biggest problem for me with these type of boards is the driver and having Windows recognize it correctly. The one David has listed here is the one I like to use, this CH340G. So if you need the driver, just go into this link, download whichever version you need, you can unzip it and this will install it here. And then just hit install. Driver has been installed successfully. You can close this. And if you need to confirm that the board's getting recognized correctly, go into Windows key, control panel, hardware, device manager, and open up the COM ports. It should say CH340 and give you the COM port number. So now let's download the source code that David has created for us. Takes us to GitHub, we'll go to clone or download, download zip, we'll head to downloads, we'll extract all, we'll open up the folder, open up marquee, and open up the INO file. This will open it up in the Arduino IDE. You might need to go grab this software. If you do, there's a link in the description below. The install is pretty self-explanatory. So here's our code that makes everything work. Now we do need to install the board library and several other libraries to get this to work. So we'll start with the board. David does provide links to all the things you need to install, but you can copy the board link, head into the IDE, go to File, Preferences, and you can paste your board right in here. Hit OK, go to Tools, Boards, Board Manager, and then if you search for ESP, it's going to be this one right here. 
Mine's already installed, so I don't need to reinstall it, but you will have to have this installed to get it to work. You can close this. You might need to close and open the IDE again, but you should be able to go into Tools now, go to Boards, and find that Wemos board. It'll be down here at the bottom. Wemos D1 Mini Boards. Now there's a couple other libraries we need. Let's head to Sketch. We'll go to Include Library, Manage Libraries, back to the Instructable. We need the Arduino JSON library. Let's search for JSON. Be careful which version of the JSON library you install. There's a lot of beta versions that are somewhat flaky. I've been sticking with this 5.13. I actually have 5.13.1, and it works just fine. So go with 5.13.2. We need the Wi-Fi Manager library, so we'll search Wi-Fi Man. It's this one right here, Wi-Fi Manager, install that. We need the Adafruit GFX library. Let's just search GFX. It's this top one right here. We'll go with the newest version and hit install. Now for the Max Panel 72 library, you're probably going to have to install this one manually. So let's go to the GitHub. We'll clone or download. We'll go to Downloads. We'll extract all. We'll copy this folder. We'll go to Documents, Arduino, Libraries, and we'll just paste that whole folder right in here. Now you will have to close and open the IDE, so we'll go find our sketch again, open up that INO file, and we need a JSON streaming library. So let's search JSON, and we'll go with the JSON streaming phraser. Hit install. Now after all five of the libraries have been installed, and that board library has been installed, we should be able to verify. And the compile was successful. So if you get some errors down here when you try to verify, the most likely cause is you missed a library. So go back, make sure you have all the correct libraries downloaded and installed, and just give another try to the verify, and eventually you'll be successful. So there are some settings we need to change over in the settings.h tab. So we'll use the pull down, let's go to settings.h. So for all the things that you would like to display on the panel, you're going to have to get that information from somewhere. So you're going to need a service, and they're going to have to provide you an API key. Fortunately, most all of these are free, but you do have to go sign up. For example, this openweathermap.org. So you have to sign up for an account, enter all your info, create account. After the account's created, you should be able to go to API keys, grab your key. You can paste that key right here, and then you'll need your default city number. You can click this link right here. So we need Kansas City, Missouri. We'll click the city. And you need this number right here up top in the URL. So we'll copy that, head back to the code, and paste your city number right there. You can add a marquee message if you like. Let's say Chris's basement. You can set whether it's metric. You can set whether it's 24 hours. This is the username and password for the web interface. I'm going to leave mine default for now. You can set refresh data time, scrolling time, scrolling speed, and you can enable some of the other services. I don't really care about the news, so I'm just going to set this one to false. The geo name is what gives the longitude and latitude location. By default, it's using the Chrome or username, but you can use his or go set up your own account if you'd like. You just go to this URL. You can go ahead and look through this file. There might be some other features that you want to enable. Check out the Instructable. Chromer does show you a few more extra things. And here's where you can enable your Octoprint instance if you'd like. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll do true. We'll set the print server IP, and we'll go out to Octoprint. We'll go to settings and grab its API key back into the code, and we'll paste that right there. You can also set times to turn the display on and off. By default, it's 6.30 and 11 o'clock at night. I'll just leave it default for now. You can set how many horizontal displays you're using or how many vertical displays you're using if you want to make it bigger. This one's using four by one. And when you're happy with all the settings, make sure you're cabled up, make sure you're on the right board, and then we'll hit upload. The upload is complete. Once your upload's complete and everything was successful, it's going to say hello and start scrolling. Now we need to connect it up to the Wi-Fi. So we're going to head over to the laptop. So when we start up our Wemos module, it should default as an access point. So we should be able to see it from a wireless connection. So let's take a look. And here's the default name that David has used for that access point for that module. So we'll click on it and we'll connect up. That should automatically set off a redirect page. If you don't get the redirect page, it is 192.168.4.1. You can just head to that. So let's configure Wi-Fi. Enter in your Wi-Fi name, or it might be up here on the top. 
this is the one I want, I'm gonna click it, and then enter your password. Then you hit save, and now your LED board should be scrolling all the information that you set up. The first thing that it scrolls is the IP of this Wemos module. You can grab that off of the LED, and then you can go to it with your browser. We'll head to Chrome, and mine was 192.168.1.146. This will take you to the web interface of that module, and now you shouldn't have to configure anything else in the IDE. You can just set it in here. So we'll click on the menu. We can go to Home, and this will show you a quick status. You can also go to Configure. The default username is Admin. Default password, Password. So here you'll have all the same settings that we used in the code. Since we used a green housing, let's bump the brightness up to 5. Anything you want to change, you can set it here. I'm going to go ahead and save that change. Now all we have to do is put the electronics in the case. On my screen, I'm going to adjust my pins so they point up so they fit in the case a lot better. All the signals on the back of the board are upside down on my screen. This is actually the top of the screen. It reads correctly this way. So I want to put it in the case like this. And you want to get the screen as close to the front of the mount as possible. You just want to get it in between these two clips right here. The back is going to fit like this, and your Wemos is going to slide in here. We'll just lay the wires down inside here, slide the board onto the backing plate, make sure your USB power is on the end, and it'll fit on here just like that. You can plug it in from this side, and down here are some screw holes. I think I'll use some 2.5 millimeter screws and just tap them in. And it's all done. It'll give you the time, the local weather, some news if you'd like, your marquee, whatever you'd like to put on there, even some advice, and most importantly, your print status. Now you can have all this information wherever you have a 5 volt USB plug-in, cell phone charger, your computer, wherever you want. A big thanks to David again for creating this project. This is a great way to get into 3D printing and Arduino, and I really enjoy showing you how easy it is to get something like this done. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.